So I've started using two keyboards in my performance and I needed to get a keyboard stand that would hold two keyboards. So I looked at the, uh, the Spider and the Apex systems between two and three hundred dollars. They seemed pretty good. But then I read the user reviews and I started getting a little nervous because they said that the keyboards weren't that stable and the like and I just didn't know what to do. So like I always do, I said, well, maybe I can build something. And that's what I did. I built this stand that I call the K2 and it allows you to put two keyboard stands one on top of the other in perfect position for you in addition I've attached a plate that accepts standard microphone uh, threads and a quick release here so I can take my microphone and pull it right off when I'm when I have to knock this down and put it back on when I want to perform. To make the column, I have four pieces of 44 inch long by three and a half inch wide pine. Two of the pieces I've ripped down to three inches. So these two are three and a half, and these two are three. I've also made two blocks that are three and a half by one and a half. Now I'm going to place, I'm going to glue this and place it flush with the top of the column. Just like this. The bottom spacer I'm going to bring up a bit because I have some more work to do on the bottom once I glue all this up. And where it goes really is important. Just as long as it's far enough away from the bottom so I can do, do my work. Let's call this the top. Flush with here. I'll put the side pieces on. So I'm going to let this dry for at least an hour and then we can go on to the next step. I've completed the glue up and I've trimmed down this end here so that it's nice and flat and I've trimmed down the bottom end so that it's at a 20 degree angle. And now, I'm going to prepare a piece to go in here that's flush with this 20 degree angle. Now I've prepared the piece, and as you can see, it has a 20 degree angle on either side. And when I place it in the hole, it remains parallel to the 20 degree cut. So I'm going to use a T-nut. Now with the T-nuts mounted on the back, you can see how the machine screw goes in and screws right in to that T-nut and it as tight as it can be. And now I'm going to prepare the rod by drilling holes so that the machine screw can go through and screw into the T-nut. I'm going to do that by centering this piece on the rod and drilling the appropriate holes through the rod. So I've completed that part of the project. Let me take it apart and show you what I did. Okay, I drilled two holes that allow the machine screw to go through and two larger holes on the other side that allow my screwdriver to go through. So now that that's set, I'm going to attach this piece to this piece. I'm going to both glue it in and also screw it in from three sides because I want this to be really sturdy. So let me do that.
Actually, although I said three screws, I actually did four. One on either side. And let's see how this mounts. Just tighten this up a little bit more. There we go. And as you can see, that's the mounting. And this is as rigid as can be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some filler pieces to go on either side of the rod. So I've cut out the pieces on either side and have screwed them in and glued them in. And now we have a nice sturdy perch. However, if I just leave it like that, it's going to fall over. So I need, so I need something over here that's going to come down and take care of that. So I've made what you might call a long U with a five inch spacer in the middle and two pieces coming up to about there, about a little less than three feet high. And these are about one and a half inches wide. I've positioned the column to be flush on the floor so it's coming up at 20 degrees. I've positioned this, this leg to be perpendicular to the floor. So now I'm going to attach it with a dowel through this first leg, through the column, and then through the second leg. Now I've drilled three quarter inch holes on either leg. And now I'm going to mark the position of the leg on the column and drill three quarter inch holes so I can run it through. I drilled the hole through the column. I put the three quarter inch dowel through. Now because this U flexes, it's a simple matter to put this on either side. And what we have now is a freestanding keyboard holder. We need to be able to put the keyboards on here. So what we need are two platform holders and then two platforms. Now here are the pieces for the bracket. We have one piece with a 20 degree angle on either side. And then we have two end pieces with a 20 degree angle cut. Now I've completed one bracket. Let me show you what it looks like. It's screwed in on either side and it's glued. And when I attach it here, you notice it's going to be nice and level. So where do I attach it? Well, that depends on your height and where you want it. The nice thing is, if you attach it here, and I'm going to attach it with just two screws, and you don't like it, you just take it out and put some screws over here. Now here's the bracket attached. And if you notice, I used a speed square to make sure it was perpendicular to the edge of this column, which means it's level. Now I'm going to make a platform on which to put my keyboard. So here's my platform. From trial and error, I made it 18 by 12, 18 being the width, and a 20 degree angle on the edge. But if I just leave it like that, it'll just come back, come off. So what I've done is I've cut a five inch long piece of wood at a 20 degree angle and I'm going to attach it to the column so that the platform can just slide in and out. And here's the platform with the screw going into the support. Now it can't move and to make sure I know where it goes I placed a little stop there. So when I put the platform on I just push it over to that side and then put the screw in. Works very nicely. Now I'm going to make the second bracket. Here's the second bracket. Very much like the first. The only difference is this angle is 28 degrees instead of 20 degrees. And what that does is it gives me a downward slope for the top keyboard, which is what I want. So I'm going to position that, attach it, put on the support, and put on my platform. So the bracket is mounted and I have my platform which in this case is only 10 inches by 18 inches. I have my stop on the bottom here. I put the platform on, slide it over till it hits the stop. 
put the screw in. And the platform is nice and sturdy and is not going to move. I drilled a hole in the leg and into the column so that I can place a screw in there and that holds the leg assembly stable so it doesn't move. So let's see how long it takes to knock this down and get it ready to take home after the gig is finished. First we have to take this screw out and I also drilled another hole so that when we're transporting it, it actually holds this in place so it doesn't flop around. I'm not going to have a drill or anything at there, so I just bought a little screwdriver that has both a Phillips and a regular. Take this out. That one's off. Put it back in so I don't lose it. Take this one out. Same thing. Put it back in so I don't lose it. Go to my flat blade. Turn it upside down. And take these two screws out. That hold the bottom piece. There we go. Take these two out. The metal bar. Put them in here so I don't lose them. Just tighten the bit so they don't come out. And we're done. That's it. This is ready to transport. I have this piece, I have the two shelves, and I have the bottom bar. And that's it, ready to go. So with that done, I'm going to pretty this up and paint it black most likely, and I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. So I've painted everything up, as you can see, and I've made a few changes, so let me show you what they are. First, I put a piece of uh, plywood on the front. That prevents this U from flexing at all. Secondly, I put a little pin here that prevents the U from going any further than vertical. So it makes it easier to figure out where it is when I'm putting this uh, locking mechanism in. Third, I got rid of the screw and I got a hex bolt, a five inch long hex bolt and I cut off the appropriate amount and what I got was this it's a nice pin with a head so when I put this in it just slides in slides in like that and when I want to take it out I just take it out and it's a lot easier than unscrewing and unscrewing a bolt over here on the bottom I plug the ends with a piece of wood and then I put little feet on this end, on this end, and in the middle here, on this piece. And that gives me a three-point contact, which is much easier to stay stable than the whole rod sitting on the floor. Now finally, I bought one of these plates that has the threads the same as a microphone stand. And I also bought one of these, and I'll show you what this is in a second. I'm going to screw this on. Okay. And I have a mic boom. And on the mic boom, I have the mating piece of that quick disconnect. So, you put this on like this. You push the button in. 
and if you're doing it with two hands it works really well and once you push that button in it's nice and stable it can rotate back and forth to wherever you are and when you finish playing and you want to break down you just take that right off and you have just a little stub sitting there you might wonder hey I got this platform that is angled and I'm going to put my expensive keyboard on it how do I keep it from falling well I tried many solutions but the one that worked the best and was the easiest was this I just took some spray adhesive and I sprayed it on the platform I didn't connect anything to it let it dry but interestingly enough it remains tacky tacky enough to keep the keyboard from sliding but not tacky enough to put any residue on the keyboard so it's a perfect solution for this I sprayed it on both keyboard platforms and it works really well so if you want to learn more about the K2 keyboard stand you can email me at the uh, email address shown here on the screen